we run the danger when we talk about biblical worldview of keeping it a mental um, a mental workout. The problem is if they're not shaped by it, even into their hearts, where it becomes a part of who they are, um, we're really wasting our time. Now, I want to talk about our child's holiness and and. What does biblical worldview have to do with the holiness of our child? It kind of explain that and unpack that for us. Absolutely. Yeah, we we run the danger when we talk about biblical worldview of keeping it a mental um, a mental workout, um, helping the kids, you know, trace back their beliefs back to how you know that we can justify our beliefs through God's word, and that's wonderful. The problem is if they're not shaped by it, even into their hearts, where it becomes a part of who they are, um, we're really wasting our time. Because what what ends up happening is they they grow up and they say, well, that was mom and dad's faith. That wasn't mine. Um, And they may have learned all those things, but if it doesn't hit the heart, um, we're in trouble. And so I've been thinking a lot about this because someone challenged me on this, actually. I had just given a, some speech on biblical worldview and, and, you know, assessments and all that sort of stuff. And they said, well, there's something missing about this whole thing. And I'm like, well, what? What's missing? Um, you know, maybe I can turn into a speech or something. <laughs> and they were like, uh, they're like, well, what about holiness? I mean, how does this make anyone, you know, actually act different? And what's concerning to me is that we, we live at a time where it seems like even the church despises holiness. They, mm. they despise having to take a stand against LGBTQ stuff. They despise mm-hmm. having to take a stand against sin. They, they don't want to be Pharisees, and they use that as a shield to not have to obey God's law. And so we have to tie a biblical worldview to God's word, and not just to God's word, but how do we get our, our young people loving God's word? Mm-hmm. Um, David says that he, he said in the Psalms, he said, I love your law. I mean, I mean, how do, how do we start helping our kids understand that we are, you know, the law isn't evil. The, the law is, you know, we can't by ourselves follow the law, but, but the law is God's character. And loving the law, loving God's word is loving God's character. One of the main things that I think is so powerful about homeschooling is is being able to have home worship, um, where the where the kids um, see that okay, this this is a part of my learning. This is a part of you know what we do right before we eat, we pray. Um, Mom and dad want me to go to church, but also part of our routine in the day is that we really do believe this so much that mom and dad are gonna worship God with you. And we're going to, we're going to sing songs We're we're going to read a little bit out of God's word and then we're going to talk about it. And it doesn't have to be six hours long. It doesn't have to be a sermon. It doesn't even have to be prepped for it. It just has to be a time where the family sits around and actually worships the Lord in an organized way. Um, so the, so our kids start seeing that we do believe this. This isn't just curriculum. This isn't just, um, habits. But this is something mom and dad believe so deeply that we want to worship with you. And I think that's part of that whole biblical worldview work that we have to do with our kids. Homeschool Insights is sponsored by CTC Math. If you're looking for a great online math program, visit ctcmath.com and try it for free. For more great homeschool inspiration and resources, listen to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast every Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. 